Welcome back to General Structures 2 and Lateral Forces Lesson 3, example number 1. <clears throat> this is the second video. And we left off with calculating, we're doing the, the method of joints, and we have gotten with joint A. And where we have found out FAB, F force of AB in the y direction. Now we need to figure out what the force of AB in the x direction is and so on and so forth. And as you can see, hopefully you'll know this, and you can go back and look at your calculation, or not calc, calc but your trigonometry principles. And you should know that if you have a 45, 45, these are both 45, 45, 45, 90, that the both legs will be equal. So you will know that this is actually going to be down. Let's, let's change that. This is going to be down, and this is going to be that way. This is going to be in compression. And another thing I like to do is go ahead out here and put C for compression because that will help you out and, and not confuse you. All right, so FAB in the X direction equals if usually we say the right is positive so the left is negative so we're going to say negative 3.5 kips that's also in compression but um, what we need to do is figure out what FAB is we don't care actually I'm not I'm gonna get rid of that compression I only like putting compression when we get to the FAB the force of AB and whatnot so now we need to figure out what FAB is. We know what FABY and FABX are, and hopefully you remember that the Pythagorean theorem states that. Now I'm not going to state it. You guys, hopefully, you should know that. But it is the square root of FABY plus squared plus FABX squared. So 3.5 squared plus 3.5 squared equals 24.5, and the square root of that is. 4.95, give or take. So F A B equals 4.95 kips. That's kind of sorry. Sometimes I'm a little bit anal about my handwriting because it's hard to draw on this in the first place. But using this, I'm using a tablet. It's hard to draw that way and have good handwriting. So I, I try. And um, that's in compression. So we know it's actually going down like this. So next thing we need to do is do the force, sum of forces in the x direction. And we only have one force in the x direction, and that is one unknown, that is, and that's FAC plus a negative FABX, which FABX is... Um, Actually, in this case, sometimes I just do negative 3.5 kips. So we know that FAC equals, you'll have to put that over, equals 3.5 kips. And that's going to be in tension because since that's going negative, negative this is, has to go positive. So we were correct in that assumption. All right, I had to get my phone. I'm back now. Obviously, it was instantaneous but say paused it 3.5 kips in tension remember if we assume it's going out we assume it's tension and then when it becomes positive that means it is in tension all right and I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this but what I like to do and when I was in school with calc paper is you would just simply these are the your answers is you go ahead and box them or you can underline them or whatever you wish to do if you're doing calc paper or um, in a, this type of setting, even if you're doing calcs and if, if you're doing engineering calcs, you want your your answers to stand out. So I typically will underline and box my answers when I'm doing calculations in real life for structures. So there there is your, that's the force of FAB, which is right here. That's has 4.95 kips in, in compression. And then you can design your member 
on that 4.95 kips in compression then you figure out what member can handle and usually you'll it's strictly ax axial so it's a simple PA I'll call it is uh, axial pressure equals or you can call it well, I'll use what we've been using is your sh axial stress equals force over area. So you take this FAB and divide it by whatever area and hopefully that your actual stress will be less than your capacity or your allowable stress. I hope that makes sense. And your allowable stress, you will get that from the you'll get the allowable stress from how, how how big your section is, the area of your section, area of section, and you multiply that. So in, in the end, your FA, I, I call it big F, is your allowable stress. And you can, it's the same thing, F over or P, sometimes they call it P over A, but in this one you have FAB. And that will give you, actually, that if you take your allowable, let's say it's 50 KSI steel, and you take your area over here, and you multiply it by your area, which is going to be, let's say this is 10 inches squared, you will get a an allowable force equal to 500 kips. And as you can see, 500 kips is much larger than this. So 10 square inches is way too large. And I, when I say that, it, it probably will be, but then you're not getting into buckling. That is that is assuming this, and I'm not going to get into that any further, but th that's where uh, it starts to get a little bit more difficult with compression members as you'll have to deal with buckling. But anyways, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to try to explain any more on that. So that was method of sections for joint A. Now we have our answers and, and what we'll typically do, and you'll see this if you look at, is you can come in here and you will write that answer 4.95 kips and you want to put that compression. And then we have down here 3.5 kips and that's going to be in tension. So now you know that when you come to the next joint you can figure out what you have. Alright, and when, when we come in here with your, you want to when we come into a joint, you to figure out which joint you want, you want to be able to isolate some unknowns. So the question is which joint is better to go to next? Typically it's the one with, well in this case it's going to be B, I'm assuming, because this is and you could go to either. You really could. You have two unknowns and you have three unknowns. In that case, I'd go with the two unknowns. And this one's completely, this one is a uh, horizontal, so it makes, you don't have to, to bring out the components. But then again, you could define your X and Y axis as like that. And therefore, you would have to bring out your components. But I, I typically will do the X and Y axis as straight up and straight to your right as positive X and Y axis. I hope that made sense what I was trying to say. So let's go on to joint B and hopefully we can get this in. I will go do this as quick as I can. I'll just put a box. And this is right angle. And this is 45. And we're going to assume that FBD is tension. We're going to assume that FBC is tension. And we know that this is actually compression, so it's going to be going in. FAB is compression, and it is 4.95 kips in compression. And we also, I should have kept this information. Well, we need to, we sh I should have kept the components of FAB because I'm going to have to figure it out again. But they're also on my calculator, which is good. And I know that they are both 
3.5 whoops that didn't show up 3.5 kips and 3.5 kips all right so we need to do the same thing we need to figure out the best way to go with some of the forces and the I believe that the which direction will be the easiest the y direction first will probably be the easiest let's go ahead and get the components out I always like to look at components so we are assuming that this is intention so you go right there and this is a, a always going to be a right angle right there I typically don't write it because I know that's what it is but I guess in that case I should explain it so this arrow will go down this arrow will go to the right since that's where FBC goes now let's go ahead and label them actually I don't need to you guys know what I'm talking about this is I will label them shoot FBC X and FBC Y so let's go ahead and figure out what those are F oh on second thought we can't figure them out until we know what they are so let's see what we have how can we figure out what what can we isolate and the answer would be we can isolate F forces in the y direction because we have one known and we have one unknown right there but we have two unknowns in the x direction so let's go ahead and just do it here we have 3.5 a positive 3.5 coming from right there I'm not gonna FAB I guess component of FAB and then we have a negative that we assume to be negative F what is it? F B C Y. And I think I erased that on accident. F B C Y. That's kind of hard to see. F B C Y. And those are our only two. So bring it over there. You're going to F B C Y is going to equal 3.5 kips. And that's going to be in tension. So you know this is tension already. So we can, you can even come up here and put a positive. And then when you get to the FBC, you can put the T or the C. So if that F, let's see here. Now what we can do, since we, we know FBC, Y, <coughs> we can figure out, and you should know from opposite interior angle or angles, I think it's called. That's my son, Liam. He's ready to go bye-bye. Anyways, but this is 45 degrees as well. And that's 45 degrees, and this is 90. So these legs are equal. So since F A goes down, it means it's positive, and that's kind of hard to, to understand. It's positive, uh, meaning it's going down. Our assumption was correct. Then this will be going to the right, which F B C X equals the same is a plus. 3.5 kips and we know since we did it last time that FBC equals what 4.95 and that's going to be since it's positive it's going to be in tension so now what we have left is we know all the sum of the forces in the x direction equals 0 and you have 3.5 it's positive it's going kips because it's going to the right and then you have FBC which is going to the right as well which it equals 3.5 and then you have a FBD which we're assuming is positive it means it's going to the right and those are our three forces yes so we have one two three so therefore F B D equals seven because you're going to add those together. You have seven kips. F B D will go over here. It will become negative, so it's going to be a negative seven kips, and that means it is a, it, that it is in whoops compression. All right, I'm running out of time, so I will see you on the next video.